All right. We get to learn how to make what we're viewing right now. This is a 3D projection. More importantly, it's an easy way to count cells in 3D. Um, in this instance, uh, cell clusters. Um, you'll also get a nice Excel file if you choose um, some added stati statistics. You can get an Excel file you can save very easily from this procedure. Um, it's also a nice visual aid for lab meetings, for publications, um, anything of that sort. Very cool looking. So if you're ready, we'll get started. So what you want to do, first off, is make sure you have Fiji and make sure you have your image file ready. And what you're going to do is open whatever image you want uh, to quantify into Fiji. And I already have my image selected, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up into Fiji. So you can just drag and drop like I do, or right click however you want to open it. All right, so close out of that first window, and here's my images. Now all my channels are merged, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to unmerge them. So if you're not sure how to do that, just go up to um, image and then down to color. And then you can go down to split channels. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of any of the channels that I'm not necessarily interested in for this example. Um, but I will mention that uh, your nuclear staining might be important for setting your parameters correctly or um, ensuring as a control that you're just counting single cells. So you're welcome to use this at a later time and I can kind of mention that for you later when it might be helpful to consider the nuclear uh, staining as well. So um, you'll get an idea um, whether you're counting cell clusters like me so maybe the nuclear staining might not be as important or if you're counting single cells definitely consider that nuclear staining so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the channels necessary for this example i'm going to situate those and to make it easier i'm just going to rename them and this is actually td tomato so i'll just name it td tomato and this is a basal marker so i'm going to just rename that uh, basal Right. Now what I'm interested in is I want to count uh, this TD tomato, all the TD tomato labeled cells. I want to uh, count those. I want to see how many of them there are in 3D. So all the stacks I want to count at once. And there's an easy way to do that. Just go up to analyze actually and then um, down to 3D objects counter. But you can go down to options first to ensure that your options are all set correctly. So I'll go ahead and uh, click on options and you'll see all of these different check marks are available for you, all these different options. I select the number of surface voxels and that's essentially like a cell size or the size of the cell or the size of a cell cluster and then center of mass. Uh, if you want uh, to add some statistics uh, to your Excel sheet that it gives you at the end, you're welcome check whatever you need um, if you don't select the box just know that the Excel sheet will just put a zero there any of the check boxes will have a value for whatever you're selecting also for the parameters um, I always set my dot size to 20 font size to 20 and select that uh, show numbers and check that white numbers box and that's uh, that all works perfectly for me now you can go back to analyze again and down to 3D objects counter for another window pop-up. And then uh, for this one, you'll see some more options for you. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna include the objects on the edges. Now, if you get incomplete cells on the edges of your um, Z stacks, you can just exclude them and I'll just throw those out right off the bat. Set your thresholds. Uh, you'll see, move it to the left, image becomes blown out move it to the right you're including less of the cell or less of that color whatever's in that channel I'm gonna leave it right about 58 works well for me um, 
just set it for you. Move that slice back and forth, see that it's capturing all of what you want in each slice. Size filter, a little more important than the threshold. Uh, this is this can ensure that you're getting rid of like maybe any background staining, any just like speckles or single fluorophores that might be showing up. You can get rid of those. And since I have cell clusters, I don't really have a maximum size limit. Uh, I want it to capture everything, so I set it for you know I set it for the sky. I'm not really worried about large cell clusters. I'm actually expecting them. So set that for whatever you want. You can exclude. Um, a maximum limit depending on your application. Now this is gonna take a little bit of computing power so if you have a slower computer, older computer, you may not want to do this on your computer. You may want to go use like a shared computer, a lab computer, something with a lot of memory um, and maybe a faster processor and it'll work much more quickly. Uh, you may also get an error um, if you have if you don't have enough memory to do this step. So if you do get an error, definitely just go look for another computer to do it on. Use a friend's computer. Uh, so I'll just fast forward through this section. It's going to take a little bit of time. All right, so once everything's complete, you'll see some windows pop up. Uh, the one on top for me is the statistics window, and depending on what statistics you requested, you'll have either zeros or you'll have some values. So I requested that it record the number of surface voxels, and this is just relative cell size or uh, the surface size of a cell cluster. And then you go over and you can see that it also provides you with an X, Y, and Z coordinate for each of those cells. This will save as an Excel file, but I'm just going to exit out of it. You're welcome to save it if you want it. Um, also, you'll see the center of masses. So this is just numbering the center of mass of each of those outlined cells or cell clusters. I'm going to get rid of that because that information is also included in this surface map and this shows um, the outlines of each of those cells as well as a number for each of them and these numbers come in handy later on when we merge these together because you can get a good idea of where the cell sits if certain cells are touching or not um, so what i want to do also is you'll notice this is uh, in a blue color and i want to change that color so i'm just going to merge these together and then I'm going to ignore the source LUTs so that I can change that color of the blue one. And if you're worried about losing or losing the images or messing up, you can keep those source images so you can try some different colors too. I'm going to keep that TD tomato in red, throw that uh, basil back into green, but I'm going to throw the surface map into yellow. I think it just makes it pop a little better, it looks a little better for a visual aid. And then here's the merge channels and you can see now the lines are yellow, the uh, numbers are yellow as well. And then you're going to want to throw this into 3D to get that end result, the example that you saw at the beginning. So to go to image stacks down to 3D project. And if you want to get rid of the gaps between your stacks, click that interpolate button. Um, if you have some gaps you can get rid of them that way and then just click OK this is going to take a little bit of time so we'll fast forward through this okay now that that's complete you get this last and final pop-up video this is the finished product where you actually get to see how cool it looks um, so I'm very interested in everybody's final images and what they might look like but here's mine all the individual cells are numbered outlined and you can rotate this image around and get an idea of what they look like in three-dimensional space really helps when they're all numbered you can see if they're in front of that sample or in the back or in the middle if they're touching if they're not touching how many they are the size from the surface voxels in that excel in, in that excel file great way 
to provide a visual example for a publication or um, for a lab meeting. Here's another way to change the frames per second. If you want to speed up that rotation, you can do that. Looks a little smoother when it's going a little faster. You may want to slow it down, take more time. Um, that's completely fine. Whatever you find that helps you. I'm glad you guys stopped to watch my video. If you like it, please throw me a like um, so that I know that I'm doing good things here. Thanks for watching. Take care, guys, and good luck with your research.